Do I have a Swiss chard garden? Yes, I've got a four by eight Swiss, Swiss chard garden. Are there plants in it? Yes. Have I harvested anything since? And, and are these mature plants with fully developed root systems? Yes. Have I harvested anything since November? No. <laughs> hey, it's Greg here with MaritimeGardening.com. And you know, just about every top 10 list I see when you're, when you're reading these different uh, gardening websites written by so-called experts about things you can grow in the winter under cold frames and that sort of stuff. Uh, every one of those lists includes Swiss chard. And uh, I'm sure there are certain zones, growing zones, uh, or certain places in the world where um, Swiss chard will work. Um, but uh, my problem with a lot of these articles, they really don't qualify the claim that it's cold loving with a, with a, a measure of, well, how cold? <laughs> and in what conditions and so on and so forth. Uh, so I'm in zone 6A. Uh, and that tells you how cold it could possibly get in the winter, but it doesn't tell you how much, how sunny it might be during the winter, right? So if you've got a cold frame, the amount of sun you get in the winter is almost more important than how cold it can get, because the sun is what's heating up that cold frame, or that hot house, or that greenhouse, or you know whatever sort of microclimate you've affected, right? You've, you've basically got something that allows. Uh, sunlight to get in to warm up the space and it's, it's able to hold on to that warmed air for a, a given length of time. Um, so if you haven't got a lot of sun, <laughs> it doesn't really matter what zone you're in because the sun's the thing that's supposed to heat that space. So right behind me here I've got a bed of Swiss chard. I grew Swiss chard here all, uh, all summer long and then the Swiss chard, uh, you know, uh, you know, it started getting cold outside, so before, before the, the Swiss chard really got too affected by frost, I covered it. So this has been covered by, the Swiss chard here grows right up until about November, and then it just starts getting too cold for it to grow, and the leaves actually kind of get pulverized and liquefied by the cold. So there's only so much, the, the plant might survive, but the foliage really can't take, uh, you know, uh, extended periods of, uh, minus Celsius temperatures, especially in the double digits. Um, so I did an experiment this year and put this uh, dome over this bed. So this is a bunch of mature, tough, seasoned sort of plants uh, that uh, you know would have otherwise kept producing. So let's pop the lid off here and see what shape my Swiss chard are in. I have not, so, so full disclosure, I mean I've been looking through it you can't really see through it right now because it's frosted up. I've been looking through this so I have a pretty good idea what I'm working with in there. Um, but I have not popped this lid off since like November. <laughs> so let's have a look what we got. So, yeah. From what I can see, there are still signs of life for some of these plants. I'll zoom in a little bit here. And you can see some green. So the plants are still alive. And they perhaps it's the case that on a really sunny day the soil thaws out and they, they, they are growing incrementally in little bits. Because I can see some signs of life. But I have not harvested Swiss chard since November. <laughs> Maybe it's growing at a rate of one-tenth of one millimeter a day <laughs> or something like that, right? Um, so, yeah, uh, I guess my point is that uh, if you read something on a blog and someone says something, makes a claim, it may be the case that that person has direct experience and they're um, speaking from experience and a place of knowledge. Or maybe the case that they're just basically like a professional writer and they're just writing something that they read somewhere and repeating it and they really don't have a lot of experience with that particular thing. Uh, let me get in here just to give you a sense of what's, what condition the soil's in. So yeah, it's, it's first thing in the morning here so, you know, I, I think some of these beds sort of freeze overnight and then if it's sunny they thaw out a bit during the day. Um, but just to get a sense of what we're working with here. You know, we're 
We're frozen down. Let's see how far down the freeze goes. Holy smokes. Okay, so it's workable. So I would say, it's almost like checking the ice when you're ice fishing. Uh, I say we got about three inches. It's frozen down three inches, which is better than all the uncovered beds. They're just frozen. <laughs> They're just ice. You know, when you live somewhere where it snows a lot and then it rains a bunch and then it freezes and then it snows a bunch and rains a bunch and freezes, all that water just freezes the ground up. The ground gets, where I live here, the ground gets really frozen over the course of the winter and it takes quite a while to uh, thaw things out. And this is why I use these, these domes in my garden to thaw them out. From the places I'm planting things, trying to get things started in the spring, I have to use these just to, to accelerate, get things happening in the spring. Otherwise, you know, your spring, in terms of sowing and germination, spring might not even start till June. And uh, I want spring to start in April, <laughs> right, so that's why I use these. Um, but anyway, yeah, we got some, you know, here's a little, you know, yeah, we, we've got some life here, and we do have what looks like a tiny bit of new growth, but it's it's a, it's an inch, inch big, <laughs> right? <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> all right, you, do I have a, um, do I have a Swiss chard garden? Yes, I've got a four by eight Swiss, Swiss chard garden. Are there plants in it? Yes. Have I harvested anything since? And, and are these mature plants with fully developed root systems? Yes. Have I harvested anything since November? No. <laughs> so anyway, I thought I'd uh, just share that with you because it's, it's one of these things people suggest. And, um, and you know, maybe it, I'm sure there's places where it'll work because it's, it doesn't get as cold or, it, or it's exceptionally sunny and you know, you can affect a really good uh, microclimate with a greenhouse or something like that. I'm sure there's ways to make it work. Um, but maybe you live somewhere like me, where uh, you just don't get a lot of uh, good sun during the winter. And you're reading something where they're saying something works, and you're, you're, you're seeing that it doesn't work. And you think you're doing something wrong. You're probably not doing anything wrong. <laughs> you're just reading an article that's it's not that well written. The person didn't qualify the statement with... You know qualifiers like in this condition with this climate with this many hours of direct sunlight a day that sort of stuff right that that stuff that context is very important because that context is everything so i hope you found that interesting if you did please like share subscribe check out my podcast maritimegardening.com and until next time get out there get at it have fun in your garden thanks for watching <laughs>